restore us. Cause thy face to shine upon us, and we will be saved. It tells me that that is who we look to, Lord God of hosts. And what we asked for, and he restore us. And cause his face to shine upon us. Grant us that favor, that help, and that safety, that rescue, and salvation. Would you bow your heads with me, please, as we open this time in the word of prayer. Lord, indeed, all blessings do come from you. Everything that we have has come from your hand. We thank you for all of the ways that you have blessed us, sustained us, helped us, carried us to this point. And God, your people can look around us and look behind us and see that you have led us to this point and know that by your faithful hand, you will continue to lead us. And Father, we live in troubled times. We live in divisive times. And we pray that you would restore us First by bringing revival to your people, and then to this nation. That you would bless and heal and protect our families, our homes, our communities, and this great and wonderful land that you have blessed us with. I pray tonight as we pray that we would set aside all of the things that are on our minds, the schedules, the uh, distractions, the burdens and concerns, that we would just lay them aside for a few minutes and seek your face and come humbly into your presence. Worshiping you tonight. Asking you, God, that you would indeed hear us as we pray. Heal our land. Restore us that we might be saved. In Jesus' name and for your sake, I pray these things. God's people said. Amen. To the flag and states of America, to the Republic.
when I was asked to present a scripture reading, I thought, well, I'll just use what Jesus teaches on prayer. So I pulled several sources together, uh, several from the Sermon on the Mount. And it sort of begins in an uncomfortable place. For Jesus says, and whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand on the street corners <laughs> and in the synagogues in order to be praised by others. But truly I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go in your room and shut your door and pray to your Father who is in secret. Your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the pagans do, for they think they'll be heard for their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. Pray then in this way. Our Father, our Father in heaven, holy be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done here on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Rescue us in the time of trial and keep us from the evil one. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive your trespasses. But if you do not forgive others, neither will your Father in heaven forgive you. A little later on in the same sermon, he says, Ask, and you shall receive. Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened. For everyone who asks, receives. And everyone who searches, finds. And for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. For which one of you, if your child asks for a fish, We'll give a snake. Or if your child asks for bread, we'll give a stone. If you then, who do evil things, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give what is good to those who ask him? jumping to the Gospel of Luke. Then Jesus told them this parable about how they ought to pray always and not to lose heart. For in a certain city there was an unjust judge who neither feared God nor had respect for people. In that same city there was a widow who kept coming to him and crying out, Grant me justice against my opponent. But he refused. Then later on he said to himself, even, even though I do not fear God and have no respect for anyone, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her request lest she wear me out by continually coming. And the Lord said, God hear the cries of his people who cry to him by day and by night? Will he not grant their request? And yet when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? He also told this parable about those who 
trusted in themselves as righteous and regarded others with contempt. There was a Pharisee who went to the temple to pray. And he stood there praying thus, God, I thank you that I'm not like other people, thieves, rogues, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give a tenth of all my income. But the tax collector, standing far off, would not even look up to heaven, but was beating his breast and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went out down to his house justified rather than the other. For all those who humble themselves will be exalted, and all those who exalt themselves will be humbled. In 1987, the Constitutional Convention was taking place, and I don't know if you're aware of how we got our current House of Representatives and House of the Senate, but there was first of all the Virginia Plan. The Virginia Plan was that every state should be represented by how many people lived in that state. And the small states like Delaware, they didn't have very many people, said, we don't like that idea. And so then there was the New Jersey plan. The New Jersey plan said, we need to have every state have an equal vote. And the states with a lot of people didn't like that idea. We don't want to have the same voice as they do because we have more people. And so they thought about it and they got in a big argument. And Benjamin Franklin stood up on June 28, 1787. Benjamin Franklin was not known for his piety in his young years, but he was older and wiser now. And he made this address to the Constitutional Convention. The small progress we have made after four or five weeks close attendance and continual reasonings with each other are different sentiments on almost every question, several of the last producing as many nays as eyes, is me thinks a melancholy proof of the imperfection of the human understanding. We indeed seem to feel our own want of political wisdom, since we have been running about in search of it. We have gone back to ancient history for models of government and examined the different forms of those republics which have been formed with the seeds of their own dissolution no longer exist now. And we have viewed the modern states all around Europe, but find none of their constitutions suitable to our circumstances. In this situation of this assembly, groping as it were in the dark to find political truth, and scarce able to distinguish it when to us, how has it happened, sir, that we have not hitherto once thought of humbly applying to the Father of Lights to illuminate our understandings? In the beginning of the contest with Great Britain, when we were sensible of danger, we had daily prayer in this room for divine protection. Our prayers, sir, were heard, and they were graciously answered. All of us who were engaged in the struggle must have observed frequent instances of a superintending providence in our favor. To that kind providence, we owe this happy opportunity of consulting in peace on the means of establishing our future national felicity. And have we now forgotten that powerful friend? Or do we imagine that we no longer need his assistance? I have lived, sir, a long time and the longer I live, the more convincing proofs I see of this truth, that God governs in the affairs of men. And if a sparrow cannot fall from the to the ground without his notice, is it probable that an empire can rise without his aid? We have been assured, sir, in the sacred writings that except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. I firmly believe this, and I also believe that without his concurring aid, we shall not succeed in this political building, no better.